Hello and welcome back to another video here at Faith Mission North Irish District. It's great to have you listening once again. Just going to share uh, a short devotional message with you for today, being Tuesday or whenever you find yourself viewing this video and trust that you'll be able to listen in with us. As Jesus went about his earthly ministry, as we read of in God's word, there was either two groups of people, people who wanted to follow him and people who did not. Many people were invited by him and chose to follow him wholeheartedly. Yet some other people decided to go down their own path. They thought they knew better and didn't want anything to do with the Lord Jesus. And we see this in the Gospels. And I'm just going to divert our attention to the Gospel of Luke today. And one of the excuses used by a man in chapter 9, uh, one, of, one of these men says that he had to go and bury his father first. And then he'll go follow Jesus. And another man said he would follow Jesus, but first he had to say farewell to those he lived with. So many people made some excuses why they couldn't just go and follow him. And this me first mentality, which uh, really is shown, was fundamentally opposed to Jesus' concept of following him. In verse 3 of chapter 9 of this Gospel of Luke, Jesus demanded that we are to deny oneself and follow him, to take up the cross and follow him, leave everything behind, because Jesus is what is most important and also in this chapter jesus said that he requires man to hate his own to hate his own life also and as we see in our day through the use of advertising and contemporary media whether it be in a movie in a book in a uh, a video game that we live in a culture that praises you when you put yourself first when you focus on what you want, that you want to achieve a specific goal and you don't, you don't care who you hurt. You don't care what obstacle you have to jump and get over to get to that goal. But you are praised when you put yourself first, when you put number one first. But the danger is that it can be quite easy for Christians to adapt this me first attitude as well. And I believe it's very important for us to consider some of the ways that we can be guilty of having a me-first attitude in life. And I trust it will be a help for you in your walk with the Lord. But if you, if you find yourself viewing this video as someone who has not yet asked Jesus into their heart and knows what it, knows what it means to have a relationship with him, I trust that you would follow as well and see reasons why you should follow him. By not having yourself first in your life, but having Jesus as number one. Firstly, we can have a me first attitude in our attendance. The Bible reveals the example and the value of gathering together with other, Christ with other Christians and the blessing that that can be to one's heart and one's walk with the Lord. But it's very sad to know that there are many who put their own personal interests before opportunities to attend uh, services, whether that be on a Sunday, a prayer meeting, or even in these days, a Zoom call for prayer, whatever it may be. And these come in many different forms, perhaps a bit less in these forms now with the pandemic we're living in. But if we look to a few months ago, many excuses included recreational outings, family gatherings, uh, work or school things that needed to be done, or simply staying home and watching about the telly. Many, many excuses. And um, this is really, when we, when we talk about not attending, this haphazard attendance of your place of worship is one of the first signs of this me first attitude. And also a me first attitude may be commonplace in our lives when our contributions start to suffer. Now, what am I talking about when I speak of contributions? Christians are instructed through God's word that they are to give their prosperity to meet certain needs. And with this being the case, there are many who choose to give sparingly. Of course, there are many believers who give their time and give back to the Lord because the Lord has given us so much. But it's sad to know that there are those who do give sparingly. And even though this attitude contradicts the word of God, they do give sparingly. More often or not, people, they often get their paycheck and they say, okay, I've got this amount of money. I've worked hard for this. I'm going to use it on myself. 
I'm going to pinpoint what I want to get, maybe uh, a new set of clothes, maybe something to uh, help me through the evenings, whatever it may be, uh, a TV show to watch, anything. But they start to pinpoint what they would like to purchase for themselves. And giving sparingly also means that you have failed to properly budget your contribution to the Lord. And you can often be burdened by bills upon bills. And of course there are bills that need paid, necessities, paying off your mortgage. Perhaps there's bills where you have to pay um, just, just, your, just your normal rates. But there are bills that we think are necessities when in fact they are, they are luxuries. Perhaps our monthly subscription to a TV service, our, our, our weekly takeaway. There's these things that we think that are necessary in our life when in fact they are luxuries. And negligent giving of the gifts that God has provided for us is also a sign of this me first mentality. And not just by monetary gifts, but God has blessed each and every one of us with personal gifts. Gifts which we are to use to serve God, to glorify him and to serve one another as well. We are instructed to do so in First Peter chapter 4 and verse 10 where it says, As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Even with this instruction, there are many who may, there are many who make little effort to do their part in the work of the Lord, to do their part in their local congregation. And I trust that you are not one of these people, and instead you will be encouraging those who are lacking in this area. And if we are to lack in involvement in our church, this is as well another sign of a me first mentality. But let me just point at one last sign of putting yourself first. And it comes in terms of family relationships. Family relationships suffer as a result of putting yourself first before everything and everybody else. Christians, they have duties to members of their families, duties to uphold and to adhere to, to glorify God for your relationship with your family. But many families begin to suffer when these duties are not fulfilled and people instead seek to put their own interests first. This can occur in many ways. For example, it can occur with a husband and wife when they begin to be selfish in their dealings with each other. But it can also occur within a child. A child feeling to honour and obey their parents. It can come in many different forms. Broken and dysfunctional homes are very common when a me first attitude is placed into the home. And from looking at these four areas of life, we see that our service to the Lord, to his church and our family are greatly hindered when we put ourselves first. It's also detrimental to those souls around us as well. So instead of initiating the me first principle in your life, I would encourage you and challenge you today that you would initiate the others first principle. What is this others first principle? Well, it's a principle that was exemplified by Christ through his teaching. This greater principle is exemplified by Jesus Christ. Jesus, he came down to earth to serve to put others first, to offer us hope with the free gift of salvation when he died on the cross for the sins of the world. And because Jesus did this for each and every one of us, you could say it is really the mandate of the believer to adopt the same mind and the same attitude, to follow the example that our Savior left for us. That we shouldn't seek to do things out of self-ambition, thinking, I'm only going to do this if it gets me a promotion. I'm only going to do this if it gets me more money. We should also seek to raise people to be higher than ourselves. Put them first. Take care and consideration for their interests. Jesus was the one who exemplified this principle. And therefore we should seek to follow the path of the Savior. No greater example can we follow today. 
And as we close, I want to ask you just one question. Do you have a me first mentality in your life? If we do, if we do have this mentality, we aren't following Jesus as we should be, as God has intended. And our church and our spiritual lives will suffer as well as a result of this mentality. We should be seeking actively, day in and day out, to rid ourselves of putting ourselves first. Get rid of me and put Jesus there. Put others first. The thinking of putting ourselves first will be destroyed when we adopt this others first principle. And this others first principle will then develop and when we make the kingdom and then we make the kingdom of God first in our lives. Just want to leave to you a verse in the New Testament, a very well known verse and perhaps very well known in faith mission circles especially. Matthew 6 and verse 33 says this, but seek God, seek first, sorry, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. We trust that message has been an encouragement to you today and a help with your walk in the Lord, that you would put him first, put others before yourself and seek to serve him in every aspect of your life, seeking to give him all the glory. We enjoyed our time of mission last week and we trust that you have as well and we uh, appreciate all the continued feedback from that. We look forward to Friday, uh, Friday evening again where Andrew is going to come and share with us a message from God's word and we look forward to seeing you back with us then. Okay, thank you and God bless.